What's going on guys? It's Bruce Madsen, your host of the show. No name yet for the show, but I'm keeping rolling with some fantastic Dynasty Fantasy Football content. I'm getting you ready for them rookie drafts, and today I'm going to be talking about Mac Jones. How he'll project to the NFL, how he should be valued in rookie drafts, how we should value him in fantasy football, and just what I've been seeing lately. This is a one of many reviews I'll be doing on these players, so expect another one of, of, about him here in the next couple months. So this is pretty much a, a preface to another review to another review because I'm always analyzing, always looking at these players. But right now I'm busting out these quick reviews on these players to get some content out for you guys so you guys have something to watch, something to look at. And as I'm going through the process, I just want to share what I've seen. So I watch some games of Mac Jones today. I've been watching him all season, and I just want to share my thoughts. And I feel like I feel like he's a very underrated quarterback prospect. I feel like he's been miscalculated amongst many, maybe analysts or people randomly on social media. And just diving into the tape, watching him in the games, uh, I, I, from watching him on TV, he look he looks good, especially to me. Announcers have been pop, pumping him up all year, comparing him to Joe Burrow. That may be another video about him later on. You know, I've been doing them comparison videos, so you definitely want to subscribe. You don't want to miss out on that. But analyzing the tape versus watching someone on TV is a lot different because you just focus on finer nuances and see what's really going on with the player after watching him today i i like mac jones i like how he goes through his progressions how he can quickly go through his reads and he does some things different compared to a lot of other quarterback prospects at the college level he does a good job at looking off defenders and freezing like DBs and linebackers to have a clean window to get the pass out. I saw a play today where he was stepping back, he saw Devonta Smith open, and but the linebacker was over here shading, he had a linebacker blitzing. So what he did was to freeze that linebacker, he scanned this way, froze him, that way he had a clear path because if he was dead-eyed on Devonta Smith, that linebacker would have read his eyes, could have jumped the route, could have jumped the play, made an interception, tipped the ball, caused some kind of havoc, or maybe caused him to go further into his progression, allowing that linebacker that was blitzing to get to him. Uh, and other things I've noticed is he stands tall in the pocket when pressure is coming, and he's, he's not afraid, he keeps his eyes downfield, and he can drop his eyes, move forward in the pocket, pick his eyes back up, find where he left off, and still be in tune with the wide receivers running the routes, which, it, which is a rare trait that quarterbacks have. Um, other quarterbacks I've seen to have that trait that was really good, Kyler Murray, but those two players don't c compare at all, but in that aspect, they kind of do. It's just he is very good seeing things with his eyes and then having that compute in his mind to, to make his decision, to throw the ball, to see the wide receiver open. And he does a lot of little things like that. Another play I saw was he had a tight end coming out open in the flat, which could have been an easy, easy completion. Devonta Smith running a short post. And at the time when you're looking at it on tape, you had the linebacker following the tight end. You had the, the DB kind of up top shading Devonta Smith and they were in zone Devonta Smith all he had to do was just make his cut cross his face and get open but at before he made that read there was a lot of cluster but at the time at that read that tight end had had some field in front of him he seemed like the easier play but Mac Jones knew half second second into the future Devonta Smith is going to be the more open guy. Devonta Smith is going to be the player to be open. And him being able to think forward on those plays makes me feel good about his mental state into the game. Another play I saw, 
and this was a while ago this wasn't on today's film session i had was the vonta smith was running and up and out or out and up or whatever and um jones saw that he was one-on-one -on -one with the vonta smith and vonta smith comes out on his route and the vonta smith had him by like half foot maybe a little less and you saw on the tape Mac Jones just look over real quick, and um, you knew from the gaze that Mac Jones is like, yeah, I got this. And then he looks over towards the middle, looks over there for about a second, flips over, Devonta Smith's open, and hits him. And then it was just that chemistry he had with Devonta Smith that's just second to none and different than what you see with a lot of wide receivers. And I notice. In all the games I watched, they pumped him up as if he was very comparable to Joe Burrow, which they do have some similar traits. But what stands out is just his mental processing, his ability to go through his progressions quickly, stand tall in the pocket, and make those throws. And just transitioning the game from a mental aspect, he shouldn't have that many problems or he should be ahead of a lot of quarterbacks. What I didn't really like is he was, he is highly likely to hold on to the ball too long, get sacked, which is another comparable trait to Joe Burrow, and um, take sacks, hold it on too long, which is a bad trait once you get to the NFL. If you're playing behind a bad line or you're getting blitzed a lot, that could end up being some bad situations. A lot of people just automatically assumed he was throwing out a clean pocket all the time. But if you watched a lot of his games, there were instances in those games where teams would just try to blitz the heck out of him, to try to rattle him, to try to make him make a mistake. And in those instances, he wasn't thrown from the, a clean pocket. But during those times, mostly he was able to step up and survey the landscape Get, get out of harm's way, make the play. Sometimes he did get sacked, but under pressure, he doesn't get rattled. And that, that's the main thing I like about him. When I think about how he should be valued in this quarterback class, there's this main tier of Justin Fields and obviously Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence being the one guy, Justin Fields being the two. Those two guys shouldn't be moved around. I don't care who you're talking to. And then there's this um, tier below it, Lance, Trask, Wilson. He should be right in the mix with those guys. And I'm not saying to bump him up. I'm not saying to put him up with Fields and Lawrence. I'm saying he should be highly considered amongst that second tier. And that's a wide tier. Like, you can kind of make a separate tier inside that tier. But um, you just have to not discount Mac Jones I wish he was more mobile. He's not the fastest guy. He is very creative when he's working in the pocket. Like he can escape a little bit, but he's not going to give you that Konami code. So for fantasy football purposes, going to fade him back a little bit because of that. However, when it comes to just being able to excel at the NFL level, it's a good chance for that. And the thing I like about him is he's going to be faded in rookie drafts. Especially one QB leagues, you're going to be able to get him cheap. I'm talking maybe third round-ish, depending on where he goes. So pretty much a free, free quarterback that you invest in. Usually third round picks in rookie drafts, all bust, pretty much. 2QB, that's where the price gets a little steep. We're going to see second round range, late first round. Where he goes, that's what's going to impact his price. He's going to be a first-round pick this year. He's going to be at least a late first-round pick in, in the real draft. May work up from there. Wouldn't be surprised. And he came. At, he was smart coming out for the draft this year because going into this season, he was a mid-round guy, and now he's earned his way up there. I mean, he passed for 4,500 yards and 41 touchdowns, had a very Joe Burrow-esque year. He, he deserved it. But that's all I got right now on him. I'm going to come out with more here soon. There will probably be a good 3, 4, 5, 10 videos. So if this is something you like, if you're even a Mac Jones fan, you're a Bama fan, 
Make sure you hit that subscribe button because you know them Bama guys are all up in this draft and I'll be talking about them. If you're into dynasty fantasy football, rookies, or just like football in general, I'm your guy, dude. Hit that subscribe. But I want to say thank you. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.